Welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is calling Win Automation from Power Automate. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So naturally Power Automate is a holistic automation platform. Whether you are building API or automated flows, business process flows, and now RPA is you now have a single suite where you actually can go ahead and build and execute all these different automations. Now what recently has happened is Microsoft has acquired Softomotive and they have a technology called Win Automation which allows you to go ahead and automate RPA processes. So naturally bringing Win Automation into the fold and being able to call it from an automated flow is actually a huge opportunity uh, for people that are building solutions on the Power Platform. Now naturally Win Automation has some new capabilities that don't exist in the Power Platform today. And so certainly bringing the best of both worlds together is going to create many, many opportunities. And so what we're going to talk about today is the ability to call a win automation process from Power Automate. And even more interesting, we're going to be able to pass data from Power Automate into the win automation process so that we can actually use it downstream. Now for today, there's no first party support for getting data back from Win Automation back into Power Automate. Obviously there's things you can do, uh, such as writing a file, executing PowerShell, um, etc. And we'll explore some of those options in future episodes. But for now, we're gonna focus on just passing data from Power Automate over to Win Automation. Now the interesting thing here is that we do see some error messages coming back though, uh, which is a very positive sign. So if we call Win Automation process and it fails, we actually will get that feedback into our Power Automate platform. And I will show you that as a result of some of my testing, naturally I had an error and I was pleasantly surprised to see that feedback back in my automated flow. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. So if you're going to go ahead and follow along and try to go ahead and build out a solution that uh, involves Power Automate calling Win Automation, you're going to want to go make sure you have the latest bits of all the components. So this includes Win Automation. So here you can see that I previously, in the video I had published a couple weeks ago on Win Automation, was using a version that ended in 5.7.4.0. And so you do want to go ahead and upgrade that. And in this case, I'm upgrading to 9.2.1.5758. So as of June 21st, this was the latest version of the software available on the winautomation.com website. Now the same thing goes for the UI flows. So go ahead and update UI flows. Now the version I previously had was released on 423, uh, April 23rd, and I was running a version that ended in 20113, or maybe that was the install date, but this was the version that I was running. And when I went ahead and updated it, I am now on a version 1.1.76201165. Bottom line, just go ahead and update these components. Now, I also updated my gateway because I felt it was just best to have everything at the absolute current version just to avoid any potential pitfalls. So I would encourage you to update your gateway as well. Now, in the previous video, this was episode 31, I'll include the link in the description. I had a scenario where I went out to the ISO website, so that is the Alberta Electric System Operator, where they go ahead and publish energy prices for the province. And a lot of companies that are involved in energy in Alberta are constantly watching that website and scraping the data and then feeding their downstream systems. And in this case, what I did is I used Win Automation to go ahead and scrape that information off the web page 
insert it into an Excel spreadsheet, and then perform some calculations. Now that was V1. So what we're gonna talk about today is V2, which is similar, but a little bit different. What I'm gonna do is from a automated flow, I'm gonna have a manual trigger. As part of that trigger, I'm going to prompt the end user for basically a cost basis value. And the goal of this is, is what we're gonna see is that on the ISO website, it'll have the average energy price for a specific day. Now, sometimes what happens is people will go ahead and buy a fixed price contract for power. And so the purpose of the, today's episode is we want to be able to take that price, that cost basis, and see if we're actually saving money by, by being on a fixed price contract or if we're losing money by being on a fixed price contract. And we're going to once again leverage Excel to go ahead and help out with that. So we'll have a manual trigger that will kick this off. We'll allow for the cost basis to be entered into the manual trigger. We will then feed an auto, uh, a UI flow, a desktop-based UI flow. And as part of that desktop-based UI flow, we can go ahead and call a win automation action called run win automation. We can pass this cost basis parameter or input parameter into that process and then send it down into the win automation process itself. Pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo and see this in action. So just as a reminder, this is the web page that we're gonna go ahead and scrape the data from. Now, in this particular case, we are interested in the top row. So the most recent piece of data is always in the top row. So the idea is that we'd always be running a day behind and essentially pulling data from yesterday. And so in this case, we would schedule our flow to run daily in order to basically pull this information out. Now on the flow side itself, here's my Power Automate flow and I've got my manual trigger and then what I have is a cost basis input parameter. And what we'll do is we'll take this input parameter and we will pass it into our UI flow for desktop. And that is configured right here. So on that specific flow, I've got this flow here and I'm gonna hit edit. And now this is typically where we would launch the recorder if we were gonna record something with UI flows itself. But in this case, we won't. We're gonna go ahead and select the run with automation preview. And so I have that configured already. And as part of that, I need to include the process path of the automation that I have built inside of Win Automation. In addition, I can go ahead and include parameters. I need to wrap them in quotes, double quotes, and then if I had multiple, what I would do is have a space, and then I would have double quotes again, and then my dynamic content value. So that's how we'd go ahead and call that. Now, remember this, my processes can't scrape energy prices V2. So if I head over to Win Automation, and this is my path, right? So my processes can't scrape energy prices and write to Excel V2, right? That is the path that I am going to capture here. And so that's where that comes from. Now, if I go ahead and open up this process in the designer, we're gonna see a series of different steps. Inside of our process, what we're the first step we're gonna do is we are going to use this get command line arguments action. And so what it'll do is it'll take all any command line arguments that have passed in and store it into this variable, which is essentially an array. Because what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set a variable that is equal to the first index of that array. And then we're gonna store the output as cost basis, which we will use later on downstream. Now, next, I have a display message, but this was just, actually, we can go ahead and enable it. This will just be for our uh, debug purposes and we'll be able to see what was the value that was passed in to our, our process itself through the command line. So this is something you could just use for debugging purposes, but isn't required for say production. Now we're gonna go ahead and just make sure a folder exists where we have all of our, basically our files. I'm not gonna go through this because this was part of the previous video, but the idea is I'm gonna go open that ISO website. I'm going to grab the entire table. I'm going to scrape it and I'm going to basically store it inside of an Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna then go ahead and get that specific window, get the focus for it, get the active worksheet, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the cells. Because I know that this will, the, the second row will always contain the most recent pieces of data, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that specific row. 
and or the cells within that row. And we can see that column one, row two, to column seven, row two. And we're gonna basically go grab that data. And what that would look like is, here is an example of that spreadsheet. I'm gonna go ahead and basically copy these cells right here, okay? Now what I'll do is I'm gonna close that Excel and what I'm gonna do is launch another Excel document. In this case, this is our master spreadsheet. And so if I go ahead and open this master, we're gonna see that we don't have yesterday's data. We have data for the 20th. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a new row and we're gonna paste the data from the spreadsheet that we had just copied from. It's gonna add a new row and it's going to basically take us to here and give us all of the information from ISO. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to insert a, basically a calculation that will allow us to subtract our cost basis from the average price for that specific day. So we're gonna see that this field actually gets populated as well. And so how we go about doing that is we're going to, number one, get the window. So I just find getting the window, make sure it's in focus. And also when I'm debugging, I can see all of the actions live in front of my face. So I always like to use get window. Then we'll go ahead, we'll attach to the running Excel document, get the active Excel worksheet. And then what we're gonna do is activate the cell that is placed at column one, row two. So basically that is currently going to be our most recent piece of data, but we wanna insert data a row above it. So we're gonna go ahead and, and basically activate that cell. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna insert a row above row number two. And so then that'll give us a blank row. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste the cells that we previously copied from up here. We're then gonna go ahead and activate the cell where we're gonna have our calculation. So this is gonna be column eight. And then we're gonna send the following keys. We're gonna go ahead and, and have us uh, basically a formula that will take the value from B2 and we will subtract the cost basis to the active window. And then this will give us essentially our variance. Either it's positive, hopefully, um, or if energy prices are really low, it could be negative because we could have a fixed price project or fixed price contract, but the market rates are actually lower. Lastly, we're gonna go ahead and close the Excel document and then we'll be able to see the results. So let's go ahead, let's just save this. We can get out of this process itself. And then let's go ahead and run our UI flow. So here's our cost basis. Let's go ahead and let's just say our cost basis is $32.50. So let's go ahead, let's run. And what we're gonna see here soon is in the bottom right hand corner of our window, a win automation process. There we go. What we're doing is we're gonna go scrape the energy prices from the website itself. And then we're gonna go ahead and open up our first Excel window, which is going to contain that data. Actually, I lied. So what's going on right now is that we do have the message box that was prompting us to basically show us the value that was passed in as a command line property. So let's go ahead, let's click OK. Here's our ISO website. And we're gonna go grab that table. Now we're gonna go ahead and, and open up, basically this is our temporary Excel file to go ahead and get the data for the first row and then bang. That went ahead and inserted the row into the Excel spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and check out our Excel spreadsheet. We can see it was just updated. Let's double click. And sure enough, we can see our new row is inserted and they're saying the average is 3441 for yesterday. And our basically cost basis was 32.50, and so as a result, we see net savings of a dollar 91 per megawatt hour. Now we can see here there were some days where it probably wasn't that warm, and so demand for power in the province was lower. And in this case, it would have been more cost effective to be on a plan that was basically the market rates. Um, but you can also see on the 19th, it must have been a very warm day. Actually, it was a warm day in. Calgary, so those prices certainly shot up. And as a result, we saved $54 per megawatt hour. So, which is pretty cool. So hopefully this gives you a glimpse into how you can go ahead and pass parameters into Win Automation. Actually, before I go, I do wanna show you that error message. Now this occurred previously when I was doing some testing. And I was having some issue, it was actually around 
closing Excel. So it went through the process and it was able to step through one by one and then it was having an issue of closing the Excel document. And so that was feedback that was sent back to our UI flow and then back to our automated flow. So what we could do here is, you know, we could use scopes to catch an exception like this to either log it, alert people that this has failed so that we could go ahead and dig deeper into it. So it is kind of cool. You're not, um, you know, without any visibility of what's going on in automation, at least that is coming back. And then certainly if it was successful, like what we saw here, you know, we can at least see that we have a 200 status code and a green check mark, which is great. All right, so with that said, that concludes today's episode. Thanks for checking it out, and we'll see you again soon on the channel.